Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today we're back to working on the metal planer restoration and uh, gonna be working on our drive mechanism for this, our, our uh, motor mounts and counter shafts and all the belt shafting and so forth like that. At least getting our, our mounts that we made installed and getting the uh, line shaft hanger up on the top installed. Uh, we're not quite ready to get it all going, but we are going to be moving a little bit forward here. So um, I've got over here, you can kind of see them in the edge, my, my brackets that I built. We fabricated those up a while back and uh, it's taken me a little bit of time. I had to go in there and, and um, do a, put a little body filler in there and kind of make it in those welded corners. I wanted to make it look more like a casting with a larger radius. So I didn't do any of that on camera, but basically all we did was just take some, some body filler, like some Bondo type material and uh, put it in there, did a little sanding, got them painted up. And uh, anyway, we've got those ready to make mount back onto the machine. So uh, let's get going on it. So we'll start on this side. I've got my, my support here ready to go and I'm just gonna kind of lift it up on here, get it lined up there more or less with the holes and see if I can get a bolt started here. All right, I got one in there. That's gonna kind of help hold it in place. I had previously come in here and we drilled these holes into the plates and then came back and drilled and tapped the holes into the, uh, the castings where everything should line up. There we go, that one started. Got our first side mounted. Let's put our second one up here. All right, I got my first bolt in there. That really helps support this while I get the rest of them in. There we go. Let's get all these uh, tightened up. these mounted. So when we put this together on these ears, I drilled a, a hole through here. Now what I want to do is drill and tap a hole through the casting that we'll put an additional bolt in. I think it's just going to give us some more stability. Um, and to do that, to get these holes lined up in line, what I'm going to use is a transfer punch. Now I've got a set of these in fractional units, basically from an eighth of an inch up to one inch. And um, you just find one for whatever hole you're, you're gonna go into. It fits the hole perfectly and it has a center punch in the end. So basically what I'm gonna do is when I do this, I'm transferring the center of that punch to a punch mark that I can come back and drill and tap and everything should line up. That's the game plan. So uh, we got these in here. Yep, I got a good center punch mark there. Same thing up here. Take one, tap that one more time. That felt pretty solid. So we got those. So now, uh, after we put these on, they got to come back off to do the drilling and tapping, but I had to get these holes lined up. So uh, we'll pull these off and come back and drill those. So I'm going to get up here and drill this hole where it's kind of going straight down into the casting. And we're going to be drilling it for 7 16 14 uh, will be the drill or the bolt size. This is a letter U bolt, uh, which is the correct one for that size tap. And I'll just use my hand drill here. I 
I don't know that I'm going to be able to drill it all the way through um, just because of where it's at, but we'll get it in there where deep enough. I think that angle's all right. And now I got a tap on here and that should just go straight down that hole. bottomed out there we'll come on back out now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for this top hole come in here try to get it going kind of straight out and drill and tap tap this hole as well. I went and checked. I don't have a bottoming tap. All I have is a taper tap. Ideally, you would want to run a bottoming tap down that hole just so you had threads all the way to the bottom. Uh, I don't have one this size, but I think my holes are deep enough that uh, it's not going to be an issue since this is not a through hole. All right. We're going to put our uh, piece back on the top and see if we can get all the bolt holes to line up. All right, here we go. Let this uh, get my hole lined up again. This top one lined up. All right, I can take the weight off. And we'll get our other ones in here as well. These uh, screws in the ends. Uh, I may have to get some shorter bolts here. These are one inch long. I really probably need some three quarter inch ones, but uh, we'll try these out. Good news is, is that they're lining fine. So that's, uh, that's half the battle right there. These might make it. I think they did. Good deal. All right, let's get this top one in. That one's going to be a little bit short. Um, I get some shorter bolts, but for right now, that's going to at least uh, do proof proof of a concept here that we got on the right track. Uh, this one is done. I need to get my holes drilled and mounted on the other one and uh, we'll work our way up, up top. We got our counter shaft brackets mounted to the machine now. I'm real happy with how these turned out. I uh, just need to get a shorter bolt to go on the top on both sides here. Uh, I got a one inch one in there now. I need to get a three quarter and I think that'll be fine. Uh, I think we're ready now to go ahead and get our line shaft uh, hangers sitting up on the top of these. I've already got holes drilled in them that should line up, so uh, it should be just a matter of putting them up there and bolting them in place. So next up, we're going to put our counter shaft hangers up here. I call these hangers because they typically hang from the ceiling upside down. I'm really kind of mounting them upside down, but it doesn't matter. They will work either way. 
but what these are used for is you have a bearing block that mounts in here. A shaft goes through it. It supports that shaft that my pulleys will be on that drive this machine. Now, this particular line shaft hanger, this is a cast iron hanger. It's an old one. I was sitting here thinking a while ago, trying to remember where this came from. I think that I got these out of an old factory up in Atlanta. It was the King Plow Company. Uh, used to make mule drawn plows and stuff like that. And back in the uh, late 1980s, uh, when I was working in a machine shop, we actually got to go into that factory and we pulled down a bunch of line shafting out of the ceiling of that old factory and we're repurposing it. They're using it actually in the machine shop that I was working in. My old boss, he had some line shaft powered machines and we ended up going in there and making a package deal on a bunch of stuff. And I ended up getting some of the uh, hangers and line shafting and pulleys and stuff that was part of that. And I'm pretty sure that that is where these came from if I remember right. Uh, but again, a bearing goes in here and we're going to have to make that part of it. I don't have the, the original bearing blocks that go on this, uh, but uh, there's set screws from the top and the bottom. There's a little piece that engages it in here and basically it just captures that block. You can adjust it up and down to get everything lined up just right. And uh, that's what basically supports that, that shaft that everything drives from. We'll go ahead and get these tightened down and get the ones on the other side. And we'll have this uh, moving along. that. Let's get the other one mounted. All right, same thing goes here. Pick this up. I had previously drilled the holes in these plates before I fabricated this, uh, so I didn't have to worry about doing it later. I already had these parts, so I knew the spacing on them. Oh. Throw my nut on the ground. Might as well throw them both on the ground. Got to get down anyway, right? that one finger tight. Let's get this other one on. it and there we go we have our line shaft brackets mounted we have our line shaft hangers mounted and uh, this is a big milestone for me in getting this motor uh, and drive system going uh, I know it doesn't look like we accomplished much here but what's what really has been my challenge has been a lot of stuff behind the scenes getting these brackets ready uh, just doing some finishing work in them and what have you but we should be able to start moving forward. Uh, I think the next thing I've got to do is uh, work out a 
motor mount arrangement. Basically, my plan is, is back here on the back side of this, I'm going to mount a motor kind of in between this. I've got in my mind how I want to do it, but now that I've got everything here, I can start making measurements and really fine tuning my design. But we're going to mount a motor in here that's going to kind of adjust up and down. It'll have a pulley that goes up to another pulley in the center section of this that will drive uh, the, the, the counter shaft up top. And then of course we'll have the two pulleys there that will come down and drive the, the two pulleys on either side. Uh, one for going forward and one for going backwards. One belt will have a half twist in it, which will reverse the direction of it. Uh, where the other one's just gonna be a straight one. And uh, that's what will make the planer go back and forth by shifting uh, the belts onto either a loose pulley like that one or a tight pulley that moves the, uh, moves the table back and forth. So we are making progress. Again, one step closer to making our first chips on this machine. Guys, that is gonna be a wrap on today's episode. Uh, appreciate you watching as always. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comments are appreciated as are those thumbs up. And we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.